Wrestling with Jim Ross on AM750 WSB. You can talk to America's leading wrestling broadcaster and its guests. Call 872-0750 or 1-800-WSB-TALK. Now, here's Jim Ross. Thank you very much, John, and hello again, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast tonight. Uh, it has been a very exciting weekend for us in the World Championship Wrestling, and it's just the beginning of an exciting week because uh, this coming uh, Tuesday night will be uh, live on TBS at the Clash of Champions, and uh, I will be working at ringside with my colleague and friend Tony Schiavone, who's right here in the studio. And Tony, welcome back to the program. Always great to be here, Jim. It's going to be a lot of fun Tuesday night, and fans, we're going to be taking your calls. We'd like to talk about the Clash of Champions or any other questions you have regarding World Championship Wrestling or whatever may be on your mind. Of course, you know to do that by calling 872-0750, or, and our long-distance line is 1-800-WSB-TALK. Also, remember for our fans in the Atlanta area that this Wednesday night, the, uh, we'll be taping at Center Stage, a big national television taping. That starts at 7 o'clock, and it's Wednesday night at Center Stage, and... We're coming just uh, 24 hours after the clash. Could be a big, big night Wednesday. We could have a, a new world champion when we go to Center Stage Wednesday. We certainly could because, yeah. uh, we, as a matter of fact, we have the opportunity to have four new champions That's at right. Center Stage because there's going to be four championship matches at the clash. And also tonight we're going to be talking about uh, the uh, big tradition in the Omni, which is Thanksgiving night for WCW. Eight o'clock will be the starting time, and Tony, we're going to be uh, working with the uh, nice people from the Starlight Foundation on Thanksgiving night. Starlight Foundation and WCW have worked uh, closely together before. I believe the Starlight Foundation people will have uh, containers out around the concession areas for you to drop your spare change in to give these uh, unfortunate children their wishes during the holiday season. For you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that may not be aware, uh, WCW does a lot of work with the Starlight Foundation. As a matter of fact, our director of information services, Wayne Coulter, is uh, on their board of directors, as a matter of fact. And uh, the Starlight Foundation grants uh, wishes to us. Uh, uh, terminally and uh, critically ill children. So it's a real good cause, and we hope you'll join us. That'll be on Thanksgiving night in the Omni. We expect another big crowd there. And uh, before we talk about the Clash of Champions, and before I start taking your calls here on AM 750 WSB, uh, I've had a very uh, unique week. Uh, we left Wednesday night from Hartsfield and uh, flew all night and landed Thursday morning in London, and within about an hour of landing, we were in uh, press conferences and uh, interviews with the media because World Championship Wrestling will be making their debut in Europe, uh, in, uh, in London. I believe the dates are the uh, 10th, 11th, and 12th of December. That's right. That'll be in London, the uh, Olympia Grand Hall, those three dates. Three dates in a row in, in, in London, and then on the 13th in Sheffield, right. the new and read in Sheffield, and then... Uh, on uh, Saturday night, the 14th, and that's where I was uh, today, uh, we'll, we'll be in uh, Dublin, Ireland, at the Point uh, Depot, as they say there. They call it the Depot? The Depot, oh. yes. All right. Yes, chap. A lot of excitement over uh, Across the Seas uh, that you brought and some of the superstars brought over there, right? We took Johnny B. Bad over and uh, PN News, and we were on every major radio and uh, television program uh, in uh, Europe uh, or I should say in England and in, uh, in uh, Ireland. We were on the uh, version of uh, what would be here in the States, Good Morning America. We were on what would be the equivalent here of the uh, Donahue Show, talk shows. We were on primetime national television last night uh, in Ireland, in Dublin, uh, with uh, PN News and uh, Johnny B. Bad doing some fun stuff. And we were on national radio, and I was, I was being interviewed by this real famous sports guy there, uh, and I was having to... We were, we were conducting the interview around him giving the horse race results and the Irish football results. And, and they're like frantic. You know, the, the, the Irish people are wonderful and uh, going to be what an atmosphere that would be. I would love to be able to tape that event and show it back to our fans uh, here in the States because the Irish people are fun loving. You know, they're, they're gregarious, wonderful people. And uh, so this guy. He must have had a lot of pounds riding on these horse races because every time the football scores came in, it kind of gave him kind of, you know, mundane. But, boy, when the horse race results came in, he was, he was freaking out. Boy, he was, it was something. So we had a great time over there, and uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun for WCW and our athletes. Boy, this is going to be a lot of traveling. Talk about some frequent flyer miles. The Bruce Crew starts November 30th. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, interesting thing about that, there's uh, people, people say sometimes, well, what, what is your audience? Are they kids, men, women? 
85 percent or 90 percent of the people going to the Bruce Cruise are female. So, Jim, what does that tell you? Tells me we got a lot of female wrestling fans <laughs> that right. want to meet the wrestlers. Want to meet the wrestlers on a in a cruise atmosphere. You know, we ought to have a maybe you and I could almost like impersonate Chuck Woolery and have a one of these dating game. Uh, new, what do they call it? Uh, the love, love connection. connection. Yeah, oh, love, yeah. Connection. The love connection. Love connection. So should be fun. And then we will go back to England and 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 Ireland in December. Then in early January we go back to Tokyo. Right. And uh, they have sold, I think. Uh, over a million and a half dollars worth of tickets for that event. Sold a little over a million dollars worth the first day. The tickets went on sale in Tokyo, so that should be fun. We had a good time there. It was fun being in that baseball stadium. Yeah, oh, wow. You'd be talking about over Tokyo. That was the biggest wrestling event I'd ever been to. And, of course, I'd been to some big ones as you had. You worked at WrestleMania? Yeah, I worked WrestleMania six at the, the Skydome. And it wasn't as big as that event right there. So it was, uh, it, was a fun, uh, it was a fun situation. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to be a lot of traveling. But we want to talk about the uh, Clash of Champions. It's going to be live this Tuesday night on TBS. It should be a really an outstanding uh, event. Quite frankly, I feel that this lineup, Tony, and just in my opinion, is a stronger lineup wrestling-wise from start to finish than Halloween Havoc was. And Halloween Havoc turned out to be a heck of a wrestling program. Halloween Havoc, I think, showed a lot of people exactly uh, what our athletes are made of because Ron Simmons, uh, little did we know that uh, uh, during that match he had uh, suffered a broken hand and he wasn't 100%, but he gave a tremendous matchup. Beautiful Bobby and Terrence Taylor had a great matchup. So I think for as far as uh, showing the world exactly what WCW is made of, athletic ability and uh, raw athletes, I think that was a step for us, and I think the Clash of Champions, you're right, the lineup is just going to be great. You know, for the fans that saw it, it uh, you know, it's easy to sit and sit back and Monday morning quarterback anything, whether it be Georgia's victory over Auburn yesterday or the Falcons' route of uh, Tampa Bay this afternoon. But it's hard to have a two-hour and 50-minute program where you don't have some action that's not as good as others. I mean, we don't have parity. There's no parity on this card. You're going to have peaks and you're going to have battles. You're not going to have 12 great matches in those. No, and you're not going to have 12 bad ones either. And the situation, I think, after we got past the cage match, which is a little bizarre, and per, and quite frankly for me, maybe a little bit too bizarre. Yeah, but, Jim, it really wasn't as, you know, we had talked in private about, wow, what's this going to be? And we were really uh, fearful of that. But it turned out okay. Yeah, it was, it was, it was better it, than we intended. It was interesting, and, yeah. and, and maybe once a year would be enough. I could handle it. Next Halloween. Next if, Halloween is fine. You know, as uh, the Lord willing, if we're still here. Yes. Uh, anyway, uh, it should be, uh, I think the clash, looking at, basing it, on, basing it on the Halloween Havoc, should be tremendous. Four championship matches. The fans are well aware now of Rick Steiner's uh, uh, incident with Lex Luger. We, you had it again uh, today on the main event. As a matter of fact, uh, you, all, you guys did a great job tonight on TBS. And I hope everybody uh, uh, watched the program on TBS. Tony uh, and Missy began their big adventure, so to speak. It is a big adventure, just standing beside of her, Jim. A couple of things about that, Tony, I'd like to talk to you about. Number one is she'll get you off the subject now if you're not careful, you know. She, yes, sir, I know. She likes to talk about her social life yes. when we should be talking about wrestling. Right. You always have to bring her back to point A. And somebody asked me the other day, he said, how do you think Tony's going to do working with Missy? I said, I think he's going to do great. Tony's got five children. He knows to handle the the infantile mentality of of poor Missy, and and I think you guys did a good job. And she's going to be working at the Clash uh, on uh, on Tuesday. As a matter of fact, she's got an interview with one of the uh, with a rookie that they've just signed. So it should be interesting. We'll look forward to seeing that. That interview. should be very interesting. You're right. Also, yeah. Also, we're going to see, especially if he's, if he's cute. Right. You know, that's all she cares about. I don't care if they can wrestle in her mind, but if they're cute, then I, then let's bring them on. You know. So, anyway, we're also going to have a feature teasing out on, on Jushin Thunder Liger, who wants to wrestle the winner of the Flying Brian Pillman Johnny B. Bad match for the WCW Light Heavyweight title. And I want to tell you something. After this trip, Johnny B. Bad was on that trip with us. We, we slept a total of about three hours a night, four hours maybe, since last Tuesday. We left Dublin this morning uh, at uh, 11.30 Dublin time, which was uh, 6.30 Atlanta time. My body has no idea if it's up or down, sleepy or not. But um, this, uh, this, this situation, I think, on uh, uh, with Johnny B. Bad coming back today, now, tomorrow's a key day for him. That's right. He needs to work out because he didn't get a chance to work out the last five days. He's got to work out tomorrow. Cardiovascular, he's got to work out tomorrow. I don't know if he's going to feel like working out tomorrow. And if he, 
this jet lag, I'm very serious, may affect the outcome of that match drastically. Particularly when you think about his opponent. Flying Brian is going to push him to the limit. He pushes everybody to the limit. You've got to be in great condition to go up against him. And that's a great point. I don't know if he'll be able to uh, get that light heavyweight title or not. And he's also having some problems, as we saw Saturday with O'Peanut Head there. Theodore Arlong, his manager. That may be, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't really ask him about that. Uh, you know, we taped that program, knew there's a problem. He was, he's a, I want to tell you something. Johnny B. Bad is a heck of a guy to be around. He is away from Theodore Arlong. He's not a bad guy at all. No, I've known that, too. He's, he's, he is a good guy. And PN News can can really eat. <laughs> I mean, the, the lad can really eat. As a matter of fact, fans, we're going to talk about uh, the Clash of Champions. We're going to take your calls uh, here on uh, Wrestling with Jim Ross. Don't forget our number is 872-0750. Our long distance line is 1-800-WSB-TALK. Welcome back, everyone. Wrestling with Jim Ross. And uh, I have Tony Schiavone here in the studio with us tonight. And we're going to be taking your calls here in just a moment or two. Remember, we're talking about the class this Tuesday night, 8.05 Eastern Time, live here on TBS. Hope you'll join us for that. Two and one half hours of live wrestling as you see it. And it'll be, uh, I think it's going to be great. Looking forward to seeing all the great fans down in Savannah going down early tomorrow. And uh, I think, Savannah, I love Savannah, Georgia. Savannah's one of the most beautiful cities in America, I can tell you that. And uh, we're looking forward to that. Great fans there tomorrow. Hope you're watching it on TV uh, on Tuesday. Then Wednesday night, we'll be back here in Atlanta at Center Stage, 7 o'clock. We're going to take this coming Saturday's WCW broadcast and the following Saturday. So it uh, should be some fireworks this Wednesday night at Center Stage. Starts at 7 o'clock. Hope you'll come out and bring your posters and banners to that one. And then don't forget the big one, the lineup. Uh, what's the theme name of this one? Battle Stars 91, Thanksgiving Day all? Super Show. Yeah. Is that it? It's not like Starcade, Battle Bowl, Lethal Lottery, <laughs> December Bur Mayhem, Wrestle War, Wrestle War, I mean, Super Brawl. It's like watching an Italian movie to, to watch, look at our pay per views. <laughs> I, I think the nice folks at Turner Home Entertainment must watch a lot of old Clint Eastwood movies, you know. Right. Fistful of Dollars, The Man Wants Revenge, He's Back. You know, hang them high. Yeah, whatever. So, anyway, we're going to hang them right here. We're going to go to the telephones now and talk to Chris. Hi, Chris. Hey, Jim. How you doing? Fine. Uh, I just want to say that I called you a few months ago, and I, pretend, I acted like I was a real big fan of Pauly Dangerous. And I want to apologize for that. And I, I'm, I've learned my lesson about Pauly Dangerous. He's really a joke. And I want to make some comments about... The Clash and about uh, Rick Lou getting a title shot over the other top contenders. All right. I'd like to say that I think, depending on Barry, Win Barry Windham's wrist, I think that uh, they could give the enforcers a run for, for the money, but I think that wrist is going to be the downfall of Dustin Rhodes and Barry Windham. I think you're right. I don't think Barry Windham's even going to wrestle, quite honest with you. Well, I, mean, I, I, don't think, I wish he could. I do too. Uh, but I don't think he's going to be physically able to. And I think Flying Brian will beat Johnny B. Bad. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, Stunning Steve will retain the world TV title. And I think that Lex Luger, unfortunately, I think Mr. Hughes and Harley Race, you're talking about a three-on-two situation with, with Scott Steiner. I know they can handle themselves. But I really think that three-on-two is going to be a little bit too much. Uh, for Rick Steiner to handle. All right. And I cannot understand the championship committee giving uh, Rick Rude a title shot over the other top ten contenders. I mean, I, I, I really think it's unfair to them that this man comes into WCW, and less than a month later, he has a United States title shot. I mean, he's only wrestled maybe five times on TV that I know of. Yeah, well, I'll tell you something, Chris. We do appreciate your call tonight. And uh, I don't understand a lot of things the, the championship committee does. So you just, uh, and I work there. Tony, can you? I think, uh, and it was a great uh, comment, uh, I think it gets down to politics. I think Paul Lee's a big mouth. He gets a lot of things pushed through that uh, normally that uh, another guy would not. And I think because of Paulie's influence with the members there, that that's why he has that title shot. Well, that's why he took the uh, Halloween Havoc on live TV to, to make all those, uh, you know, big remarks because he knew they couldn't be censored. He knew they couldn't be edited out because it was live. And he take, he like, he'll take his opportunities. I think Sting took that as a very severe challenge, and uh, I think it's going to be a heck of a match. It's going to be a great match. Thanks, Chris, for calling us. Let's go now to... Uh, 
Conyers and talk to Daniel. Hi, Jim Ross. How are you doing? I'm fine, sir. You know, the, the guy that was the uh, head flight attendant on our flight today lives down in Conyers, and, and that was the, that those Delta people know how to treat you. Mm. Great, great job. But I know, Daniel, you didn't call hear me talk about Delta Airlines. They're not even one of my sponsors. But what do you want to talk about? Well, first of all, I have two questions, all right? Okay. My first question was, um, back at the Army in October 13th, the WWF was there. Mm -hmm. And um, you know how Macho Man is not supposed to be able to wrestle? Yeah. Well, he wrestled against Jake the Snake. I was wondering, you know, if you know why. I think the situation there, why? if I'm not mistaken, was that uh, it was originally scheduled for Jake the Snake to take on Sid Vicious Justice. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, Sid has uh, an injury. And was unable to wrestle, so they brought in uh, Macho Man. But my, my buddy Tony Schiavone's here. You work for the WWF. Why would if if he's allegedly suspended and on television can't wrestle, how would he do that in the Omni? Well, I would think it would uh, come down to a situation such as this. The Macho Man would be there for who knows what reason. Let's say I know he lives down in Florida, so maybe he was stopping through, seeing some of his friends. You might have been here seeing John Torrey at Rhodes Furniture. Yeah, buddy. That's right. You never know. And he could have gone to the ring and without the knowings of uh, Jack Tunney up there. And oh. that could have happened. That does. A lot of times you'll be surprised how many things go on in the arenas that promoters are not aware of. What's your other question, Daniel? Okay. Um, the Master Blasters, um, who were they and um, do you know where they are right now? Well, one of the Master Blasters is now called Oz, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. And I, and I don't know where the other guy went, to be honest with you. Al, yeah. Al Green, was that his name? Uh, yeah, Al Green was the second one because there was uh, there were Blade and Steel, and then there was something and something. And uh, the first one lasted about three days, and then he said uh, wrestling oh, was enough. Yeah. Remember that yeah. guy? Yeah, I do. Brandon in Fayetteville, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, Jim. I got two questions. Okay, sir. Uh, first of all, What's the main event in the uh, Clash of Champions? Well, I would think that the main event would probably be uh, Lex Luger defending the world title against Rick Steiner. But there are four title matches, including uh, Sting defending against Rick Rude, mm -hmm. and uh, Johnny B. Bad challenging Flying Brian, and Dustin Rhodes, and Lord who knows, against the Enforcers for the world tag title. And so those are the four matches. I, I think, obviously, the world title would be the biggest one. Okay, and my next question is, when do you think Lex Luger will wrestle Ron Simmons again? Well, I think uh, Ron Simmons back maybe when? Uh, early December, early to mid-December? More than likely. I would think he'll be back by Starcade. I know that they're looking forward to seeing him over in Europe, and uh, hopefully Ron will be back around early December, and maybe by the first of the year he'll be back in the, in the shape he wants to be in to challenge Luger for the world title. And Brandon, we appreciate your call tonight from Fayetteville. Uh, Sean, Sean? Yes. How you doing? I, I'm going to talk, everybody this week was named Sean, I think. <laughs> How you doing in Powder Springs tonight? Pretty good. What's on your mind? Uh, well, first of all, I wanted to ask y'all's predictions on the Clash of the Champions, the four title matches. Uh-huh. I wanted to ask, uh, you and Tony, what your predictions for their matches are. Well, we're going to, uh, as a matter of fact, Sean, you make a great, uh, producer, almost as good as John Glavin. And, uh... We're going to do that right after the news, which is going to come up here in a couple minutes. Do you have anything else real quick before we go to our break? Yes, I wanted to um, ask, well, actually, I want to tell Tony that he'd make a great replacement for you, that it takes somebody like him to take your place. And well, th thank you. I, I don't consider myself a replacement for Jim Ross. It's just Jim was doing so much work over there, and that's true. Uh, that he didn't have time to eat now and then, so we had to let Jim take lunch yeah. on Fridays during voiceover day. So yeah, they stuck me in on that show. You can believe that by looking at me on TV, <laughs> you know, that round face. I, I don't miss too many meals. But, Sean, we appreciate those remarks, and we'll answer your questions. We'll get those predictions for you. But right now we got to take a break. This is Wrestling with Jim Ross on AM 750 WSB. This is the Stinger here for Jim Ross on AM 750 WSB. Give him a call and talk to him right now on 8720750 or 1-800-WSB-TALK. Call now. And welcome back, everyone, to the program. Uh, we are, have a lot of, every line is blinking right now, so we're really busy tonight, and we're going to try to get to your calls as rapidly as we possibly can. And we're also going to answer, uh, do some predictions here in just a few minutes, but I do want to get back to the phones. And we're going to go first to uh, our, one of our long-distance lines. I, Richard's been holding a long time, and he's calling us from Winchester, Kentucky. Hi, Richard. Hi, Jim. Tony, how are you guys doing tonight? Good, good. That's great. 
Uh, I had a couple of quick comments and a couple of questions, if I may. Surely. Uh, the first comment I wanted to make was about uh, the young pistols. Uh, I'd heard the comments that they'd made at Halloween Havoc, and from what I gather, it seems to me they're a little frustrated. Uh, I know they'd gotten title shots against the Freebirds and just really weren't successful, and it really kind of kind of threw me the way they were talking about the Patriots that way. Yeah, they they were. I think you're exactly right. I think. As far as I'm concerned, you've summed it up quite well. They're mm -hmm. very frustrated. Mm -hmm. I think the frustration goes a little bit further than just uh, their inability to, uh, at times, it <clears throat> seems, to win some matches. I think, uh, you know, they are good guys. They've mm -hmm. worked very hard. And they have not been well received by fans in many of the places we've gone. Yeah. Fans, you know, fans have booed them, even though they very much tried to be on the fan side, so to speak. And, and you can't figure out why, you know, after they wear the, uh, the Confederate flag and the uh, gray attire, why up north they'd be booed you know <laughs> they ought to expect to be booed up there that's i mean right. you know they're going to get that way so what else is on your mind richard uh well uh, i was really surprised at the fact that, that that dangerously was able to sign ravishing rick root after uh, i'd read an article in in pro wrestling illustrated to the point that he seemed to me that he was really sick of the managers he had in the past and it really kind of threw me if it's well they signed him one word there richard my friend mm -hmm. money uh-huh Paul E. needed a franchise player. He needed a cornerstone for his uh, for the Dangerous Alliance. Uh -huh. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, Rick Rude's one of the finest athletes, the uh, newest additions. He's the most impact new addition in WCW since I've been working with the company. I think he will be. He, he may win the U.S. title on Tuesday as well. He's in, he's not hurting. He's not got any bumps and bruises. He's he's had a limited schedule against uh, lesser competition in the last year than he had in the WWF. He's a guy that beat the Ultimate Warrior. I mean, he's had some big, big victories in his career, and he's going to be hard to beat Tuesday, quite that's, frankly. That's true. Um, uh, my, my first question I really wanted to ask you about was about the Steiner brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know that they were stripped of the WCW belts, but I have read on, on another uh, issue of Pro Wrestling Illustrated that they were not stripped of the IWGP belts. I was wondering if that were true, if that was true. As far as I know, they haven't been stripped of the IWGP belt, and we need to get you reading the WCW magazine and, uh -huh. and getting that information out of there. Have you, have you ever seen it? Yes, I have. I've got a subscription to it. Well, good for you. Uh -huh. And my last question, my little brother wanted me to ask you this. Uh, he was wondering what the next pay-per-view event would be after Starcade. It's going to be on uh, February 29th. Uh -huh. You heard that right. Leap Year Day. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be from uh, the Taj Mahal mm -hmm. in Atlantic City. Is right. That... And it's going to be Super Brawl. Oh, Super Brawl. Okay. That'd be interesting. Yeah. I right. appreciate that. All right, Richard. Thanks a lot. Have a nice evening. You bet. Thank you for calling from Winchester, Kentucky, back to the long distance line. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk to young John, who's been holding on from Mississippi. Hi, John. Hey. How are you doing? Fine. You have to speak up a little bit, buddy. I've got two questions. Okay, sir. My first question is, when do you think Rick Steiner's, uh, Scott Steiner's next match will be on TV? Uh, I think he'll probably uh, wrestle this Saturday on this Saturday night on uh, TBS th th in six days. Okay. Okay. And my second question is, when, as a WWF, when do you think they'll call a match between Hulk Hogan and Rick Flair? Well, now, what was the question? In the WWF, uh -huh. when do you think they'll call a match between Rick Flair and Hulk Hogan? Well, they're going to have a match between the two? Yeah. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, they've already wrestled. Uh, in uh, Oakland, California, right? Yeah, in L.A. and a couple yeah. other places. Yeah. Uh, real controversial uh, uh, conclusions to those matches, and I think they've had a, they have a rematch signed. But uh, that's uh, that's their hottest match right now. Probably the hottest match in, in the sport, as a matter of fact. I would think so. People have been looking forward to that one for a long time. John, thank you for calling tonight. We appreciate you very much calling us from Mississippi. And back to the telephones. And we're going up to Cobb County. and Talk to Eric and Marietta. Hi, Eric. Hi. How you doing? I've got two questions. Okay, sir. My first one is, who do you think is the best wrestler in WCW? Tony, you want, to, you want Tony's opinion? You're a Cobb County guy, aren't you? Yeah. You and Eric got a lot in common. We sure do. How many children do you have, Eric? <laughs> okay. Uh, I think the best wrestler in WCW right now is uh, is Lex Luger. Uh, I think uh, within a couple of months, you may find that Ravishing Rick Rude will be that, but I think it's Luger. I, I, think, it's, uh, I think the best pure wrestler, Eric, in the WCW right now is Rick Steiner, which makes this little situation quite interesting because they will wrestle Tuesday. Who do you think is the best wrestler in WCW today? Well, my favorite wrestler is Rick Steiner. Rick Steiner? 
Yeah, yeah, I like him too. What else you got on your mind? Um, what do you think is will be the best match at the class? Oh, boy, that's hard to say. You know, really, uh, Rude and Sting have a chance. It's hard to say because I really think I'm looking forward to all four of those title matches are going to be real good. Uh, I don't know. It, a lot of it depends, too. I love to watch the enforcers wrestle. Dustin Rhodes has really been uh, doing well. A lot depends on who his partner will be Tuesday. That could be the sleeper match of the entire night. Had it been Barry Windham, and we had mentioned earlier that we don't think Barry's going to be able to wrestle, but Barry and Dustin against the Enforcers, had, to me, had a lot going for it as a match. Yeah, should be good. But we appreciate it. Eric, thank you for calling tonight from Marietta. Appreciate you listening to Wrestling with Jim Ross here on AM 750 WSB. And Robert in Villa Rica, how are you doing? Uh, fine. Good. Um, what did the uh, Chamber of Horrors look like at Halloween Havoc? What did it look like? Yeah, did it look anything like the Tower of Doom at the Great American Bash '88? No, it didn't. It looked. Uh, it was a. Uh, it was a big cage that kind of that didn't fit close to the ring. So, like the, uh, the you know where the blue mats are on the outside of the ring, the cage fit on the outside of that. Yeah. Real high cage with. Uh, uh, well, did you see the cage for uh, Capital Combat? The pay per view we had with, uh, with Flair and Lex Luger. Yeah. Where uh, Ole Anderson had commandeered the cage to rise up? Yeah. That was that cage. It was that same cage. And then they had a small cage, Jim, if you want to continue. Yeah, they, and they had been building a cage, and they built another smaller cage. and So it was two cages in one. Uh, it's a double mint commercial. No, it's two cages in one, and uh, uh, they were kind of unique. It was kind of kind of strange. But uh, I, I, Tony and I, we talked about this earlier, I wasn't a big fan of that match. But but that's why we had eleven matches or whatever it was. I liked the other, the rest the others I love, but I didn't like that match much. What else on your mind, Robert? And um, who are the creatures? Yeah. They lost and left the building. I understand. We ever found out? We'll probably never see them again. And Robert, but they, they were dressed up in green. Yeah. And uh, Robert, thanks for calling tonight from down in uh, Villa Rica. We appreciate your call here on the program. Let's uh, let's make some let's make some predictions here. I'll okay, I'm ready to do that. Right. right here, my script here is it, there. It is okay. Uh, young man called earlier. Wanted to talk about one. Let's make predictions on the title matches. Start starting with uh, why don't we talk about the television championship? PN News and stunning Steve Austin. We'll talk about it. PN News has wrestled for this title more than once and has not come away with it. Uh, I still feel stunning Steve Austin at this time is one of the hottest. He had one of the better matches of Halloween Havoc against Dustin Rhodes, and I'm going to go with the champ. Uh, Steve Austin has been very busy, I know, negotiating with Paulie Dangerously. They should be announcing something soon. Uh, PN News is also on that big, that long flight. And I'm uh, probably very hungry right now. He ate a lot. <laughs> He ate a lot. Uh, he ate a lot of corned beef and cabbage. He may have set the Irish record. <laughs> he may be the corned beef and cabbage eater of Europe, as a matter of fact. <laughs> but he's a heck of a guy. He's a good guy. I tell you something. You really get to uh, you get to know those guys in that kind of situation. But unfortunately, what a trip. I mean, I'm tired right now. I think I don't have to wrestle Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Those guys have. Uh, I think PN News is going to come up short. I, I agree see. with you on that one. Uh, TV t uh, the uh, WCW light heavyweight title. Gets back to the same thing you were talking about with yep. PN, and you mentioned it earlier. Johnny B. Bad. Uh, we're going to find out what he's made of. We really are. But Flying Brian, to me, uh, is is what championships are all about. He is just uh, has a lot of vigor, a lot of fire, a lot of determination. I can't see him losing this match at all. European trip in the background or not? The uh, world tag title match. I'm going to, uh, yeah, I already mentioned, I think Johnny yes. B. Bad's going to be a little short on that one. And not because of ability. I just, this is... It's a rigorous son of a gun uh, on this, uh, this this tour we went on. The World Tag Team title, the Enforcers take on Dustin Rhodes, and we don't know. We don't know. And we have been told, a lot of fans have made a big issue. I've read a couple of things. Well, Barry Windham's hurt, and some new, and you should have said this, and you should have said that, and everybody could be Monday morning quarterback. Nobody's ever thrown an interception on Monday morning. I'll tell you that right now. I don't know. Everybody kept saying, well, Barry's going to be there. Barry's going to tape it up. He's going to, you know. But I don't think the doctor's going to let Barry Windham wrestle. He's got a, he's got, he broke his wrist in four places. He has had surgery. He could tape it all he wants. If he, if he goes in, if Barry Windham wrestles with Dustin Tuesday, they're going to lose convincingly mm -hmm. to, 
to Zabisco now. Because you know what Anderson Zabisco will do. Yeah. They'll go right for the arm. And emphatically, and, it, and they'll get it. So I, I'm going to go, because I don't know who the partner is. I believe in the enforcers. I don't like the philosophy, but they're great wrestlers. I'm going to go with the champions. I am also. I've heard everyone uh, from uh, Bill Kazmaier to maybe uh, Big Josh will be wrestling earlier. Will maybe wrestle again. So who knows? And I'll go with the enforcers also. The uh, another uh, U.S. heavyweight title match, ravishing Rick Rude to challenge the Stinger. What do you think about that one, Tom? Well, you know, Jim, uh, announcement was made on your program Saturday about the boxes. Mm -hmm. And finally, we will find out who has been sending these boxes. I think Sting's been too preoccupied with that. And I think because of that, I, I really don't think that he mentally is right going into this. And, uh, boy, I hate to see Paul Lee with a title. I hate to see Paul Lee with anything, but especially a title. You're not going to see him with much hair. No, you're not. Uh, I'm that's going to, not important. I'm going to say uh, we are going to have a new U.S. heavyweight champion. I, and I agree wholeheartedly. I agree not for that reason. I agree... Because Rude, in the last year, has wrestled in some much smaller organizations. The competition has not been as stringent. He has not had to maintain the rigorous travel schedule that Sting has. He is not coming back after a major reconstructive knee surgery that Sting did last year. And uh, I think he's, uh, and, and also the mental aspect obviously plays into it. I think you're right. I think, I think Rude will also be the new U.S. champion. And then Rick Steiner and... Lex Luger for the, the big one. Well, I've thought about this one a lot. And uh, as you know, Jim, I was standing right there when uh, these two guys had their little run-in. I was holding the microphone. Lex Luger never expected Rick Steiner ever to go after this title. Ever. Did, did he ever figure out what humility meant? <laughs> no, he never did. Uh, and he never expected Rick to go after the title. As a matter of fact, if Scotty would be wrestling right now, maybe he, this, this whole scenario wouldn't even have happened. But I think Lex Luger realizes what Rick Steiner is all about. And I think Lex Luger, because of what happened on TV, because he was embarrassed, because he was pinned on TV, mm -hmm. because Rick Steiner not only defeated Luger, he beat up everybody, almost beat up the referee. Right. I think Lex Luger is training now harder than ever. And I think we're going to see Lex Luger more focused on this match than he was even against Ron Simmons. Therefore, I think Lex Luger is going to win. Well, I think that Rick Steiner is going to be the new world champion. I think he's going to do it on Tuesday. And we'll talk more about the Clash of Champions with Tony Schiavone and Jim Ross right here on AM 750 WSB right after this. Sounds like uh, our good friend Clark's got a little cold there. Hope he feels better. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to uh, Wrestling with Jim Ross. And uh, we are uh, about uh, six minutes away, and we're going to try to take as many calls as we can. And we certainly appreciate everybody calling tonight. And... Uh, being involved in a program. Don't forget this Wednesday night we're going to be at Center Stage. Hope you'll be with us. 7 o'clock is the starting time for our big national television taping. And then the, the uh, Thanksgiving night event, 8 o'clock in the Omni. And that's going to be a great one. And we're going to be working with the Starlight Foundation there. Let's go up to the telephones and talk to Charlie in Norcross. Hi, Charlie. How you doing, Jim? Good. Thank you for calling. I just got a couple of quick questions for you. Okay. Um, since the Ultimate Warrior seems like he's no longer in the WWF, has WCW made any attempt to contract him or get in contact to see if he might be able to come down like Rick Rude did? No, and I'll tell you why. Uh, the reason for that, Charlie, is because uh, Rick Rude was a free agent. His contract had lapsed with the WWF, and we could legally speak to him in that regard, and Paul Lee took advantage of that situation. However, that's not the case with the Ultimate Warrior, to the best of my knowledge. Mm -hmm. Charlie, he's still uh, yeah. under contract with them, even though he's not wrestling, and their official stance on it is that he's suspended. Uh, he's suspended? Yes. Okay, and one more. Are we going to be seeing any big names coming in, like after the first of the year or uh, anytime sooner? I know that they're always talking to people, and they're talking to... Uh, uh, various ones. I, I know that there has been some casual talk with Terry Gordy and Steve Dr. Death Williams, and uh, uh, but I would expect that, wouldn't you, Tony, that sometime after the first year, well, there's always, it seems like it's, uh, there's a lot of free agents out there right now that we might have a shot at. I think the big names you'll see coming in will be guys from Japan uh, with New Japan Pro Wrestling. Jushin like, Liger. Jushin Liger. Uh, Muda. Muda, maybe. Yeah. Coming back in. That'd be good. That would be real good. Thank you, Charlie, for calling. And uh, let's go now to uh, Michael and Marietta. Hi, Michael. Hi, Jim. Uh, um, I might. Um, I just want to tell you that um, I'm a big fan of WCW and of all the figures in the ring. All those galooped action figures. Yes. Yeah, sure. All right. And um, I just want to ask you, um, 
on the um, last week, I heard you were you said that around Christmas you'd be getting some new ones. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know any of those that are coming out? Um, I know. Uh, Free birds. They're going to be some free birds uh, action figures. York Foundation. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll try to find out more about that. And uh, I think there's going to be an Eligante one. He'll be taller than the rest, I bet you. So uh, we'll uh, we'll look at that big Josh, and we'll find out about that here in the next. Well, uh, what will we do without Dennis Brinson? Dennis here? Brinson is here, the, the the head man of WCW Magazine, and Mike, he's he a gave fountain us, of information. He gave us all that information, Michael. And thank you for calling, buddy. We do appreciate it very much. You calling us tonight from Marietta? Hi, Lee. Hey, Jim, you sound pretty good for a guy that hadn't had any sleep in three days. Well, I'm working on it. That's, <laughs> it's called caffeine. Oh, boy, I know what you mean. Uh, that would be great if we could get Gordy uh, uh, down here, uh, especially if we could team him up with Michael Hayes again. That was some of the best wrestling I ever saw down in the old Texas franchise. They're, great. They're a great team. He's a, Gordy's a big-time player. I'd like to have him down here. Yeah, I would, too. Uh, my question tonight, and I regret to say that I've uh, I've missed uh, a couple of weeks because of meetings and other conflicts, so you may have already covered this ground, but I see Ric Flair on the uh, uh, World Wrestling Federation talking about the uh, alleged real champion, etc. Is the belt that he's displaying, is that a WCW belt, or is that something that he's had made up uh, in the interim? Did he walk off with whatever it was that he was wearing? Well, Lee, that's a tough question. Uh there are many within the WCW legal department that feel very strongly that that belt belongs to World Championship Wrestling. Mm -hmm. Ric Flair obviously feels just the opposite. And I think that that's going to be settled uh, in litigation, quite frankly. And I really don't want to comment on it because you know, that's how it is. Flair thinks it's his. WCW thinks, thinks it's theirs. And... Uh, well, it, it's an obvious slap in the face to the WCW because uh, it's as though, you know, it, it strips Luger of any dignity that he may have. Well, that's what it's intended to be, and that's why they're featuring it so strongly on television. They yeah. like to do everything they can to slap us in the face. Well, it's, it's like a hit below the belt, I think. It, uh, they don't really need to stoop to this type of tactic. Right. Lee, they don't need to stoop, but by golly, they will every chance they get. Yeah. And, and I think it has to do with the old NWA and that right. belt. So, uh it's right. It's going to be settled uh, very soon. We understand. Well, Tony, you you were there, so you would have uh, you you would certainly have the in, inside track. Having yeah, I, for I know them. exactly what they feel about us. I mean, I was I said in Vince's office when he said that he uh, he goes to bed every night wanting to kick Ted Turner's rear end, and uh -huh. he said that verbatim. So there you go. Well, fellas, I appreciate the information. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Lee. We appreciate it, and I apologize, to everybody. We try to get everybody on as as we could. Uh, uh, I didn't get to Chris or Carl or Tim or Harvey in Maryland or Wes in Virginia. I hope you all will uh, call us back. Uh, we'll be back here next uh, Sunday night at 9 o'clock. We'll be talking about, I imagine, some of the big things that happened to Clash of Champions. Uh, Tony, as usual, it was really a pleasure to have you here. And, and uh, Dennis, Dennis Brand of the WCW Magazine is, is here. And uh, thanks, guys. All right, Jim, thanks. Look forward to being with you Tuesday night. It's going to be a lot of fun Tuesday night. You can see it live as it happens, everybody on uh, TBS 805 Eastern Time this Tuesday night. Don't forget, we'll be back at Center Stage in West Peachtree here in Atlanta uh, this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And we're very excited to cooperate with the wonderful folks at the Starlight Foundation uh, this Thanksgiving night in the Omni. For all of us here at WSB, including our producer John Glavin, I'm Jim Ross saying good night, everybody.